In this tutorial, I will show you how to match foreground and background color, how to match your subject with the background if you're doing some composite images, if you're doing some photo manipulation. So let's start. Hi guys, my name is Nemanja Sekulic and welcome to another fun tutorial. Actually, this is a bonus one because today it's Monday and I'm usually doing my tutorials at Thursdays. But this is a bonus tutorial and let's jump straight into Photoshop and let me show you how you can match the foreground color, subject color with the background. Alright guys, today we will have fun with this interesting image, but please don't fall asleep looking at this guy because he's ready for bed. Okay, we have here two layers, the background layer and this S guy layer. S stands for Savin, it's my really good friend. And today we will match color of this guy and the background. As you can see here, first thing that you can notice is that the S guy layer and the background has completely different colors and completely different contrast. The background is so less contrasty than this guy. And first what I want to do is to increase the contrast in background. I will do that by using a curves adjustment layer and just do something like so. Maybe it's enough. Let me see. Yeah before and after, before and after. It's much better. Now what we need to do is to match the colors. I will show you three com completely different ways how to match the colors in Photoshop. Of course, there are a lot of other ways to do the same thing, but today we will do only these three ways. All right, the first method, it's really easy and fast one. You just need to duplicate the background layer, control command J, put it at the top, go to the filters here and blur, and average. And now what we have here is the average color of all colors uh, in the image. Okay, we need to clip this layer to, to the S guy here by holding Alt or Option key and press between those two layers. And we need to put this layer in color blending mode. Now we have something, but it's not enough yet. We need to decrease the opacity, something around so maybe. Let me see. Yeah, now it's much better. As you can see, now the colors are more similar than it was like before. This is before, this is after. All right, this is the first method. It's really fast and easy way to match the colors, but it doesn't work in all situations. Here, it's so-so. Depends of the color difference between the foreground and the background layer. If the color difference, it's too much than this method, it's not so good for that. All right, let me show you the second one. Okay, this second method, it's again really easy and fast one. You just need to choose the foreground layer, in this case the S guy, go here to image, adjustments, and as you can see here, there is a match color option. All right, and first what we need to do is to choose here our document and to choose the layer to match with. In this case, it's background layer. As you can see here, it's doing something to this layer. First, we will neutralize this, fade a little bit, okay, like so, and choose the luminance, choose the color intensity, and just play with these sliders until we are satisfied with the, with the results, okay. Let me see before and after, before and after. That's another way to do the same thing. Sometimes this method works, sometimes it's really bad. Again, it's same like the first one. But try experiment if you don't want to waste your time on the third method, what is the best for me. And this is the method that I'm using in my photo manipulation processes. One of the methods, but today I will teach you this one. Okay, let's go and let me show you the third one. Let's undo this. Okay. First, what I want to do is to look at the image and analyze it, to think about the colors and the contrast. As you can see here, this guy, it's actually pretty much warmer than the background image, background layer. And as you can see here, let me zoom it a little bit. The dark part, the shadows are a little bit yellowish and the mid-tones are a little bit yellowish but the highlights, as you can see here and here, are a little bit colder, a little bit 
bluish maybe or neutral. And what I like to do is first to match these colors more to the foreground, to the background, sorry, because the background has really cold mittens, really cold shadows and highlights are a little bit warmer here, but basically neutral. I will do that with color balance adjustment layer. Let's clip this layer to this guy here. We can do that by clicking on this icon here or by holding Alt or Option key and click between those two layers. Okay, let's start with shadows. As I already mentioned, let's make this a little bit closer. Okay, the shadows needs to be a little bit colder because they are now a little bit warmer. Let's add a blue and let's add a cyan in the shadows, something like so. Okay, now let's go to the midtones and we need to cool down the midtones to a little bit of blue, a little bit of cyan, something like so. Let's unzoom it a little bit. Okay, that's not bad. And let's go to the highlights, maybe add a touch of yellow, just to warm highlights, just a touch. Okay, and now let me see before and after, before and after, as you can see, there is a really obvious difference between this effect and before. All right, that's the first step. The second step will be to go to the background and to add a little bit of warmth and a little bit of contrast, even more contrast to the background layer. So let's go here. I will use maybe black and white adjustment layers. And let me show you something what you can do with this adjustment layer. If you put black and white adjustment layer in luminosity blending mode, then you can play with these sliders by changing the luminosity of these colors here. I will show you now, if we move the green slider to the right, we will increase the luminosity of the green color. If we move it to the left, we will make the green color darker. And we want to make it a little bit darker, maybe like so. And maybe, let me see, mm, let's leave it like so. With the red, I'll move this with red. We will impact this, this part here. As you can see, if I move it to the right, it's brighter. To the left, it's darker. And if we move it to the right, we have we can see more details here. If we don't want those details, we can move it to the left and have smooth surface here. Something like so. I will leave it on the left. And with the cyan here, as you can see, this part of the image it becomes brighter and we can choose, let's make it a little bit brighter. All right, that's first thing. The second thing what I want to do here is to make the background a little bit warmer. Of course, there are a lot of ways to do that, but today I will use a photo filter adjustment layer. Okay, let's click here and photo filter. Let's use this warm filter and let me see, it's before and let's use around 90, 20%. And let me now show you before and after, before and after. It's much better. Of course, we can now play with as guy layer here and do the same black and white adjustment layer, clip this layer, go to the luminosity and let me see, maybe brighten him a little bit, but I want to brighten this pyjama here, just a touch. Let me see with, with this, yeah, like so and maybe even like so. Let me see before and after. Yeah, before and after. It's much, much better for my taste. And that's basically it. We, we are pretty, pretty good now. We can do another thing. We can merge all layers together with Shift Control Alt E or Shift Command Option E on a Mac. And maybe go here to the filter and camera roll filter. One of my favorite filters in Photoshop. And now we can play for the final touch. We can go here to the FX and maybe add some global contrast with the hay slider, like so. And maybe add a little bit of vignette just to darken corners. Okay, we can go to the split toning here and maybe add a little bit warm to the highlights, just a touch like so. And to cool the shadows, again, just, just a touch something something like so nice with the P key on a keyboard. You can see before and after, before and after, before and after. 
All right, let's go here and go to the greens and desaturate the green just a little bit. This is the completely done, but it will desaturate it just a touch and maybe add the vibrance and just decrease saturation touch like so before and after before and after i don't want the touch on my tablet okay let's press okay here and wait for effort to apply great let me show you before and after before and after you just saw the third and most complex method of all those three methods that i show you today it's not so fast and not so easy one but it's most precise one let me show you again before and after let's hide this and this is before this is after before and after as you can see it's pretty pretty obvious difference all right guys we are finished for today i hope that you understood all three methods that we did in today's episode especially the third one because it's the most precise one practice have fun on your images but before you start retouching them please think about what you want to do if you want to, to match the colors between foreground and background layers, please think about that. What do you want to achieve? Do you want maybe to cool down some layer or to warm it up? Or do you want to add some contrast or decrease the contrast? Or do you want to brighten or darken the, the layer, etc., etc.? Think before you act. All right, guys, I hope that you like this bonus episode. If you have any questions at all, please leave it in the comment below. If you have some other method that's that, that it's not in this tutorial what do you like to use in color matching please write me down i will i would love to hear that from you and see you in a few days in my thursday's episode bye bye look at this very carefully because i will show you only once of course you can rewind it later see this coin take it here blow it and it's gone bye bye